Hello and welcome to this I'll Vote 21 online meeting for the Isle of Wight County Council seat of Bembridge. A uh, brief word of benefit to the public. Uh, I'll Vote 21 has been formed with the sole purpose of enhancing democracy by providing an unbiased platform for the candidates to present themselves. We have no affiliations or funding and no candidates are aware of what questions will be asked previous to today's session, although a list of topics was distributed in advance to enable the candidates to prepare. All 138 candidates in this year's election have been invited, either directly or via group and party leaders. Uh, the following candidates for Bembridge have been invited to this meeting, uh, namely Joe Robertson for Conservative and Alistair Steen for Our Island. In attendance today, uh, we have Alistair Steen, who should, we shall get round to speaking to very shortly. Candidates are going to be asked questions from our pool of questions, uh, plus others that have been submitted by the public regarding island-wide issues. Candidates have been informed that there is a two-minute limitation on answers, and I'll raise my hand as we approach that cutoff and request that the candidate finishes up as promptly as possible afterwards. Uh, before we go on with the questions, we can commence with the two minute personal statements. And as Mr. Steen is our uh, sole candidate who is uh, with us today, over to you, Alistair. Thank you, Andy. Um, I am Alistair Steen. I'm Bembridge man and boy. I live in the village centre family home of some 50 years. My family were very active in village life. My parents were the community pharmacists for over 40 years. A former parish councillor, I am passionate about all aspects of this wonderful community and know what makes it tick. I want to protect the best interests of islanders, businesses and visitors so that we all live, work or stay in a vibrant, dynamic, forward-looking area. Where we underachieve, we must develop action plans and strategies for improvement. I have a background in this. There is a fracture between the council, local town and parish councils and the communities they serve. The key to change is engagement, consultation and cooperation at all levels. Cross council working is essential for success. This UNESCO biosphere designated island is special. All council decisions must take account of environmental impacts sustainability and future generations. Planning and housing strategies must meet local needs and involve the affected communities. A stronger focus on communication must be, must be developed. Post-COVID, sustained support for a wide range of businesses will be needed, including advice and financial support. Business rate adjustments should be considered to support the recovery and to encourage growth and investment. Regulated ferry fares must be implemented to support business, encourage greater visitor numbers, and to provide affordable off-island travel. This will not be cheap. I believe a professional review of the council's organization and structure is needed to deliver efficiencies and savings and to make it fit for purpose in the 21st century. The council's mainland investment holdings must be divested and the monies reinvested in local businesses and jobs. Finally, a better financial settlement with the government is essential to recognise the unique problems faced by being an island and the higher costs involved. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much indeed. Um, that's lovely. What we'll do is we'll move straight over uh, to some of the questions uh, that we have here today. Um, and we'll start off with, could you describe your personal motivation for entering this election? Yes, I, I have two motivations for this. One, I'm absolutely passionate about the Benbridge Village community that I live in. Um, I have, I was born on the island. I was brought up in Benbridge. I know the harbour, the beaches, the, the village itself, uh, and the people, um, and they all deserve the best representation that can be achieved for them um, at the Isle of Wight Council. 
Um, the second reason um, is because I'm concerned about um, the remoteness of the Isle of Wight Council and its lack of integration with my local community here. And I want to see if I can help bridge that gap and develop policies that will enable, enable that engagement, that consultation and that sharing of information and bottom up um, type um, viewpoints to, to affect the decision making at County Hall. Um, you know, that's, that is an awful lot to, to, to put out before myself, I understand that. Um, and I have to say that I am not a professional politician. I am a um, well-meaning professional um, guy who wants to represent um, as best I can the interests of this community. Fantastic, lovely, thank you. Um, certainly one of, one of the things that we're, we're trying to do here as well um, with the, the Isle vote uh, is to try and shorten the gap between the council and and the people um so yeah very very positive things to be thinking about there right uh in your mind could you name one policy area that the council should be lobbying central government for well <laughs> the bottom line is money um we are as an island we are in a unique situation um, our costs um, are higher than for other um, mainland communities um, the costs are higher for business in terms of um, bringing across um, uh, stuff for manufacture to, to be worked and then to then pass stuff back onto the mainland when they're completed that all adds to the costs and to the profitability um, and the general well-being of those businesses. Uh, I think it's held us back for a long time and I don't think that is properly understood by central government uh, and I know that because I used to work for the Department of Communities and Local Government in, in my professional career. Um, I think also um, we have a, a, a serious issue um, Sorry, I, I, the, point, the question again, I went off on a tangent there. Oh, sorry, the, the, uh, a policy area that the, the council should uh, lobby central government for. Right, so for, for the money. Um, we have been promised um, a deal um, before the last general election over a year ago, um, which I think we all welcomed, um, regardless of our political um, colours or, or viewpoints, um, but nothing has shown up yet. Um, we are going to be facing serious problems, I believe, um, here on the island um, post COVID. Um, businesses will be struggling in, in, in both the high streets um, and also across the other sectors right around the island. Um, and we are going to need that available cash to provide support and to provide things like um, I don't know, um, tax um, rebates for businesses um, who are struggling and also to encourage new businesses to start up and, and move forward. We need that pump primed kickstarting of our economy. Um, and without the cash, we ain't gonna be able to, to do it sufficiently well. That I think is gonna be the key issue. We could all set out dream wishes and lists of things that as candidates that we want to achieve but they all cost money um, and we need that cash um, in order to take forward the best interests of all the islanders the businesses and the visitors to this island right lovely job yeah um couldn't agree with you more uh let's have a little look down here uh I mean, the, the, some of these questions can sort of uh, cross over a little bit and you can, you, you have already mentioned um, parts of this in previous answers, but name a major problem uh, that the island is facing and set, suggest a solution. 
major problem. Um, oh, God, where to start? Um, we have, um, I think, a problem within our public services in general. Um, and I include in that um, education and schools and, and school attainment um, in terms of um, health provision and losing general services now leaving the island to go over to Portsmouth and Southampton, which I think are very worrying um, for um, everybody concerned. Um, in terms of solutions, it's not a simple, if, if there was a simple solution, it would have been found by now um, and would have been implemented and, and problem sorted. It's going to take a long time of working with stakeholders, with everybody, professionals, users, um, people who work in, in, in the systems to get things moving and, and going again. I think one of the problems the island has, has had in, in delivering these services is in, uh, attracting teachers and medical staff um, to come to the island um, for work. Um, and we need to make that much more, um, much more easily uh, attained, shall we say, uh, and, and encouraged. Um, we need to work with the various organisations, the trusts, the, um, the school boards, the, um, the, the unions, um, right across the spectrum to work out strategies and plans that can be implemented, that can make a sustained um, response to the, the, the desperate needs that we've got here. Um, it won't be easy and I, I wouldn't even start to, to give a, um, a simplistic um, one size fits all answer to this because there isn't one. Um, it needs a good discussion within council across all sides of the council um, and with our communities. Um, but education, we know that we have been failing um, badly there. Um, or not doing as well as, as we would like. Um, we've had the Ofsted reports and, and comments from Ofsted um, generalissimos, um, which have not been helpful. Um, however, we do have great people here in the health, in, in the hospital and in, uh, in these services. We just need to give them the opportunity to work better um, with us quite right yeah i mean that 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 did uh, the reason I, I let you carry on for a moment there is because it, it did sort of bleed into the next question of uh what can be done to improve educational aspiration for residents uh of all ages on the island um which has been a, a public question which has been submitted so um definitely the, the that educational will point is one that, that is on people's minds. Um, right. Uh, <laughs> I have one here. <laughs> we, we won't go too too deeply into the different methods that this, this could uh, take, but we have had many questions pertaining to cross-Solent travel links, <laughs> ferries, <laughs> reliabilities and costs, uh, how would you address existing concerns uh, and do you have any vision for improved connectivity um, to the Great North Island, as I call it? <laughs> Shall we start with that one first? Yes. Um, yeah. you, can, you can talk to 10 different people and you get 10 different answers about fixed link or no fixed link. Um, my personal view, um, and I'm representing myself here rather than our island, because I don't know if our island has a view on this, is that I don't think a fixed link, even if it was affordable and deliverable, is the best option. To move back to your original question there about the ferry services, um, 
that is the one thing that I think that all islanders can agree about in terms of the cost and the frequency um, and the standard of the services that we've been provided with. Um, that is the problem, I think, of only having two um, suppliers um, because it effectively becomes, and I'm going to be very careful how I say this, um, it's not a cartel, but they are able themselves to um, largely fix their prices um, and change them, you know, depending on time of year and holidays and, and, and what have you. And it's very damaging to our economy. It puts off um, families who could go to sunny Spain cheaper than they can come to sunny Isle of Wight. Um, that's wrong. It's also not fair on um, islanders um, who have to pay a fortune just to get into the next county or the next place. Um, and it's certainly not a feasible way of maintaining things. It's also bad, and as I mentioned earlier on, bad for business. Um, if they can't get their goods set at a reasonable price at a reasonable time, um, backwards and forwards, then, you know, they're losers as well. Um, what can we do about it? Um, I think there needs to be some serious sitting down and talking to get a memorandum of understanding or some regulation about prices and about frequency uh, of services. Um, it irritates me that uh, Ireland and Scotland get subsidised for their ferry services between mainland Scotland and their islands, and yet our government down here uh, is unwilling or unable to provide the same sort of service that we require. Um, I think, and it goes back to the first question you asked about, uh, which answers about money being a key issue. That's what it comes down to here again. And it is one of the key issues that I think need to be really labored uh, and prosecuted with the government about why we are different and why we need greater help. And it is largely to do with our, that silly little bit of water between us, that, uh, between us and, and the mainland that is causing all these problems. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it really needs to be addressed and seriously addressed. Right. Yeah, um, that uh, the second most expensive stretch of water in the world after the Gaza Strip, I believe. Um, or the Panama Canal. And it's, well, that's an, uh, topically a very expensive strip of water. <laughs> Righty ho. Um, I'm looking down through here and um, the final question uh, that I'm going to put to you, and it's one that's been put to all the candidates over uh, all of these 39 meetings. Um, knowing your local community as you do, what local issue would you like to address that you know is of concern to the residents? Oh, well, that has to be planning. Um, I'm sure you're going to get that same answer from <laughs> a lot of candidates. Um, it's the one, it, it, it is something locally that people despair of. Um, when the um, island plan was, and I have to say, foisted on us with very little consultation um, and very little um, ability to um, respond and give local views, um, it caused a lot of bad feeling and upset. Um, understandably. The problem that we've actually got in Bembridge is that um, we need affordable housing that retains local people and, and youngsters and young families within the village. They can't afford it now because there are, bless them, a lot of uh, second homeowners um, and properties. I, I, I noticed that um, one of the, the, the most expensive street on the island is in Bembridge, um, in, in Beach House Lane. Um, you know, it, it's not affordable. Now, what we've seen is that um, a lot of the, the, the planning development that has gone ahead, they are for houses that are 750,000 plus. Um, and it's not affordable for, for local people. Um, and it's being put up by people who are not from the locality. 
Um, that's not to say we don't welcome people not from the locality, but at, at a cost of denuding the, the, the village of its heritage and its, and its local people isn't good. We have issues on planning with the harbour, um, which is exercising a lot of people at the moment. Um, and there seems to be a lot of um, opaqueness about how things are being done and how things are being driven. There is a campaign just 200 yards away from me to my right down here, where a beautiful piece of cops land has been bought by a, a, an off island developer to build a couple of holiday let chalets in a gorgeous, beautiful, loved area of the village. Um, and I've seldom seen um, the great, the burghers of Bembridge, the, you know, um, getting out there with their pitchforks to try and argue against it. Just whinging and complaining about it isn't good enough. Um, and I think what we need to do, because this, the fracture that I mentioned earlier on about the, between uh, the Isle of Wight Council and the local town and parish councils, um, means that we get overturned in terms of our views when we represent them to the planning committee. Um, what I would like to see is whenever a local planning decision is up for discussion by the planning committee, that a representative, it doesn't have to be a councillor, but a representative of the community has membership of the planning committee and can speak and vote um, on those, uh, on, on that particular planning application. It would allow a dialogue to go backwards and forwards between County Hall and, and the parish um, and would be very welcomed, I think, by all. Um, and it shouldn't really, um, I can't see why that should upset um, County Hall or, or, or planning officers. It is a, an addition to local democracy and Excellent. engagement. Thank you very much. Um, those are all of the uh, all of the questions that I, that I have listed down here uh, for today. Um, thank you very much for attending. It's it's been very pleasant chatting with you. Uh, did did you have any particular uh, closing statement that that you'd like to make? Um, I, I just really wanted to to make the point that I'm not a professional politician, as I said earlier on. I'm just a passionate and well-meaning professional man with skills that I believe would be useful to a new council. Um, in my, um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a career, well, I was a career civil servant, um, a qualified project manager um, with a, a master's degree in public service management. Um, you know, the opportunity to, to practice what I, what I know is, is always welcome. One of the things that I dealt with in my recent, uh, well, in, in the latter part of my career was, um, I don't know if you remember, but about 10 or 15 years ago, there were a thing called local area agreements right. um, under localism. Um, and although it bit the dust because it was cumbersome, what it did was to force all local authorities, all 150 local authorities around the country to address their services and to identify where they were performing well and performing not so well, um, and to devise plans and strategies for bridging that gap. Um, now, I, I'm not suggesting that we need to go back to that cumbersome form of, of um, intervention, but I think I would like to see ourselves on the island voluntarily doing exactly that and holding our hands up where we are underachieving um, and doing something about it, not pointing fingers at anybody or, or whatever, but just making sure that we can allow the hardworking staff of the council to deliver as efficiently um, and as well as they possibly can, um, which is why I believe we need to have a full blown um, restructuring of um, the council uh, and its services um, by you know, a professional restructuring. Um, to make sure that we are doing exactly that. Um, I don't believe that um, party or national politics have any role in 
local government as such. Um, and I don't like, and I, what I've witnessed um, for a long time now on the island, is the toing and froing between warring factions. Um, it's not helpful. I and our island want to get over that and to work in cooperation and collaboration with all colleagues, um, irrespective, of, irrespective of our individual political views and points of difference for the benefit of all islanders. Um, it, it's not ideology and dogma that counts, it's people um, at the end of the day. And that's what I want to, to get involved with. I want to represent people. Couldn't agree with you more. Thank you very much for joining us uh, today, Alistair. Uh, I'll put a link to uh, the Our Island website down in the description underneath this video so people can go and have a little look at that. Um, but for today, as I say, thank you very much and the very best of luck in the forthcoming election. Thank you, Andy. Cheers. All right.